We are honored to have Dr. Mer Amir Mermaran, Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost. Who knows what a provost is? I didn't know what a provost was either until I started working here. And the provost is our head faculty on campus. So he's in charge of all of academics on campus. Dr. Colleen Swain is the Associate Provost for Undergraduate and Online Programs. She's also joined us this evening. And Dr. Swain is your passionate advocate and manages so much of the university to ensure the quality of your education. Drs. Murmuran and Swain, please stand and be recognized. We are also very excited to have some of our uh, uh, one of our partners in practice here. I, he's not a practice person, but Daniel Delat. I'd like you to stand to be recognized. Daniel is a COO at UT Health North, and he has joined us. And he was just so excited to come. He said, "I want to see what all this is about." Uh, and then we are very, very excited to have Dr. Julie Philly here. Julie. Philly is the Executive Vice President for Health Affairs and Vice Provost. As part of our university reorganization, the School of Nursing is now housed on the health affairs side of the house. And we are under Dr. Philly's leadership. Dr. Philly will share a few words on behalf of the administration. Dr. Philly? Thank you so much, Dr. Haas, and congratulations to all of you. On behalf of administration, we've been looking forward to this day in your career and in your lives um, for a while now. I cannot tell you what a flagship program the School of Nursing is for this institution, and I want to congratulate you because I cannot think of a more important career to embark on than, than being a nurse, especially during this time in the history of this country and in the history of the world. Again, our sincere congratulations to each and every one of you. I hope that you'll do wonderful things. And again, we extend our very best. Thank you, Dr. Philly. You know, of course, we couldn't have a school of nursing if we didn't have some amazing partners in practice. And we have close ties to many different facilities throughout Texas. This evening, we're delighted to have several nursing administrators from UT Health Tyler join us to celebrate this milestone. Thank you, Angela Bowers, Megan D Dyson, Sandra Nash, and Marcy Tunstall for being here to support our novice nurses. And I see them at the back. So would you stand and be recognized? Now the UT Tyler School of Nursing faculty and staff are among the best in the country. Their passion for educating our future nurses is unparalleled. Thank you, School of Nursing family. We'd also like to say thank you to the family and friends who encourage and support our students and who are joining us virtually. Students, you have successfully, successfully competed to become part of this program. And now you're taking that very large step after weeks and weeks in the labs and the skills uh, classes of going out into the community and caring for patients. Nurses are present during the most vulnerable, scary, painful, and celebratory times in people's lives. What we do as nurses is a privilege, an honor, and a commitment. Today, we celebrate your entry into this world, one where you will make a difference every time you interact with a patient and family. At this time, I'd like to introduce a very special person. Janice and David King are exceptional friends and supporters of the School of Nursing. It is because of them that every student here this evening has received the gift of a white coat and patch. On behalf of all the students and faculty, I would like to express our deepest appreciation for this meaningful gift. Janice King has also agreed to be our keynote speaker this evening. Janice is a nurse. A native Texan, Janice started college at the University of Houston. After marrying David in 1979, the Kings moved to Lake Charles, where Janice studied at McNeese State University. A year later, they moved to Tyler. And it was here that Janice graduated from Texas Eastern School of Nursing in 1984. Over the course of the next 27 years, Janice worked at Mother Frances Hospital in the emergency department, tele telemetry unit, CICU, and cath lab. She was a staff nurse, lab coordinator, and house supervisor. She retired in 2011. Today, Janice is a nurse. I first met Janice King several years ago. 
She wanted an update on the changes that were taking place in the School of Nursing. Little did I know that that conversation would eventually lead to our event this evening. Janice and David King have generously contributed to the School of Nursing, providing each of you with your white coat and patch. Their generosity extends beyond today as their gift provides coats for all UT Tyler nursing students for this entire academic year. It is our hope that you will remember this gener generosity and upon graduation, you will give back by funding at least one coat for a student in the classes that follow you. Please join me in thanking the Kings for their extraordinary gift and welcoming our keynote speaker and nurse, Janice King. Hello, everyone. Very nice. Congratulations. I appreciate that. You saw that I was running a little late. I'll be late to my own funeral, but I'm okay with that. But anyway, Dr. Haas, thanks for that beautiful uh, in introduction. Even me, you had to. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for the College of Nursing to just letting me be involved with the white coat ceremony. I just think it's wonderful. And to my to this to my students, <laughs> to the students, you're my students too. I'm glad to be here and to share my experiences that I've had. And it's only gonna be a short 90 minute message. You'll just, you'll be okay. I'm kidding, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I could talk that long. I could talk for three hours about nursing. That's how much I love it. That's how much I've been committed to it. That's why I'm committed to it now, even though I'm not in the hospital or in a clinic, I'm still a nurse and I'll always be a nurse. And what I wanna to impart to you tonight is about being a servant leader. Now, what does a servant leader mean? Are you gonna make me you know, be a leader of a unit or a whole hospital? No, you may wanna do that. That could be your goal if you want to, but you're a leader if you have one patient. You're gonna lead that, pa that patient right there, what they need to hear from you, from the compassion that they, that that you can provide them, the kindness that you can provide them. Being a nurse, and some of the things that Barbara said, Dr. Haas said, was that, I think she kind of looked at some of my notes, but it's just because we resonate the same thing. It's a privilege to be a nurse. Not everybody can be a nurse. Some people shouldn't be a nurse. <laughs> so, but I will have to say that I just, I wanted to be a nurse early on in, in, in my life. I was in eighth grade when it really dawned on me that I wanted to be a nurse. Um, I know they've heard the story before, but I was a nursing student, no, what, not in eighth grade. I wanted to be, but anyway, but I was with the, uh, the, the student, mm -mm, the nurse at school, the school nurse. She wanted to step out. Me and my friend were taking it as an elective you know, and I wanted to be able to, uh, to, you know, again, help out. So anyway, so the nurse left, my friend and I were hanging out, guy came in, cut his hand real bad, he was bleeding, 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 you know, I just jumped on in like I knew what I was doing. And um, I turned around to my friend to ask her to come help me, you know, get this such and such, and she, all I could hear was throwing up in the bathroom. She did not become a nurse, thank you very much. But uh, it just shows you that this has been embedded in me in a long time. And I didn't have any nurses in my family. However, I did have an aunt that used to administer me to my, uh, for my asthma. So that kind of started it too. So but anyway, back to the servant, being a servant leader, which you've got to understand about service and servitude are two different things. Service is what you want to do. Servitude is when somebody tells you or makes you want half you have to do, you know, like, being ensconced in something and you know something you didn't want to have to do, a slave, any, any of those bad things. But service is a privilege. It is a privilege to be able to be with these people that most of the time, except for maybe when you're having a baby and you're very happy about that, most other times you're in the hospital, it's not for a good reason. You're sick, you need help. And it's the scariest time of your life. And you, as a nurse, have to be cognizant of that every single time you go to see a patient. They don't know what's going on. You know, maybe you know what's going on, but you don't know how to share that because this is not, this is foreign to them. 
And they may cry, they may scream at you, they may call you names that aren't any of your names, <laughs> but you have got to be the bigger person. But I want to be able to also point out to you for what I think some of the many qualities that are being a nurse is professional, you're, you're an advocate, being diligent, compassionate, empathetic, have integrity, be confident, be, have great communication, be endurance, definitely, kindness, organization, sen sense of humor, got to have that. So there's, there's a few things that I want to just point out in that list. Being an advocate is such a big thing. You have to be an advocate for your patient because you have, they don't know what they need. They just know they need it. <laughs> and you have to be the one to be able to share the details with the information you get from the doctor, the information that you get from the, the lab tech, the information that you get from the respiratory tech just own and own and own. You are that one person that has all that information and you have to advocate for them because there's some people that are like, eh, 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 eh. they're not gonna take care of them like you're gonna take care of them. You have to advocate. I can give you a, a real life scenario. A dear, dear friend of mine who was quite ill and unfortunately ended up passing, but I was with her in the hospital for, anyway, it doesn't matter how long. But anyway, I was her advocate. I was her voice. And um, I had a lady call me from her hospital where she worked um, about asking about, about insurance. Well, I guess I was not having a good day because I went left. I went, I went off on this lady telling her, why are you talking about money when she's, she's fighting for her life and so on and so forth. Well, it turns out that lady that I was talking to was a lady that I, we all went to church with. <laughs> but luckily, I didn't completely lose it. And she just said, after the conversation, you know, we figured it all out. She said, anytime, if I'm ever going to be in the hospital, Janice, I want you to be my advocate. And that's what you've got to be. You've got to be fierce. You've got to be strong. You've got to be able to talk to these people and do the best for your patient every single day. Compassion. If you don't have it, if you don't feel it, this is not the job for you. Because this, again, is a privilege. And I'm going to say that ad nauseum. It's a privilege. When, for you to be compassionate to people, you know, they, they're hurting, they're in pain, they're scared. That's the big thing, they're scared. And, you know, we got to talk when we advocate and have compassion, when we have that compassion, that goes off to the family as well. They're scared. They don't know what's going on. You, it's a whole group. It's just not one person laying in that bed. You've got a whole group that you have to deal. Compassion, kindness, love. I don't say to fall in love, but what I'm saying is that to give that kindness what we need is just that, that warmth, that warmth. And then confidence in your, for yourself. Now, I know that's probably, you're thinking confidence. I don't have any confidence, I'm in nursing school. <laughs> Ain't no confidence in here. I'm scared to death all the time. That's not true. <laughs> but you have to have confidence. You've gotta be strong. And when I say you've got to be strong, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you have got to do that because if you, are, if, if you have that, you're going to be able to help your patients. But if you don't have that confidence, they're going to see that in you. They're going to be scared. They're like, who am I dealing with here? I'm never going to make it out of here alive. And even if you have to fake it to make it, that's what you got to do, but you have to be confident, and to be confident is to have self-love and self-care, not to the point where you're like, it's all about me, anybody else, they're just on their own, that's not it, it's like, if you cannot, it's like pouring from an empty vessel, you can't give anything out, 
But if your vessel is full and whatever it is that helps you with your confidence, whether it's reading, taking a walk, enjoying time with your family, not, or, or being by yourself, whatever it is, get that confidence. And the more you work and the more you fail, but the more you get up, that's how you're going to build your confidence. When you, when you get into nursing and, and you're at bedside and stuff, you're going to be afraid. I don't care who you are. You're going to be a little afraid. But before you know it, it's just going to be like clockwork for you. That's your confidence. And communication. Oh, my goodness gracious. Communication. <laughs> Some people just can't communicate. Or they just say, well, I thought you would know that. Why am I supposed to know that? Communicate, speak, speak freely, speak kindly, but clearly. Get the information, you've got to gather the information. You gather that information and you communicate. Don't make assumptions. Don't let them make assumptions about you. Communicate clearly, big deal. In endurance, oh my gosh, endurance. I've never done a 5K or a 10K or any other K. It ain't gonna happen. But I will tell you this, you have got to have endurance in nursing. Because you might, you know, depending on what unit you work in, you know, I, I, mine was mostly in, uh, in cardiac ICU where we, um, recovered patients from open heart surgery. I mean, you could, you could have one, a patient that would just wear you out for eight hours. And that's because, and they're, and they're not even talking to you. <laughs> I'm just talking about all the things that can happen. You know, they start bleeding or they're not bleeding or don't have enough, you know, they're bleeding too much or they're, you know, they're not having enough oxygen. There's so many things that can go, ha that can go wrong but you just constantly are at the bedside. That's, that's endurance. You, you, you've got to take care of that. You have got to be able to get used to it. And that endurance is what's going to make you a better nurse. Because I can assure you there are nurses, I'm, I'm hard, sorry to say, well, I was so tired from yesterday. I don't think I'm coming in today. Oh, I know you didn't. I mean, I don't know what kind of group y'all are working with, but I know the group of people that I worked with for all of my years. Sure, there were days that we didn't want to get up the next morning and go and do it again. Let's just go ahead and get beat up one more day. But the reason why I, we, we went up, we came to work is because of our coworkers. Because we knew the patients were all go, always going to be taken care of. Were they going to be taken care of as well, as well as we'd like to, for them to be? Well, no. But the reason we ended up going to work every day is because we had that camaraderie of working together in the trenches. And it is in the trenches. I mean, sometimes these are just some horrible things. You know, when you're in the ER or in surgery and, you know, you see you're losing this patient. And it's killing you, and you're doing everything you can to, to keep them alive. That's your teamwork. And when those things fail and, and they don't survive, you've got to get together and like uh, and mourn it. But, but then you got to go on to the next patient. But you can't let that let you down. But you can keep make that. You still are human, and you can't get to the point where you, you're so thick skin that none of it bothers you. Because when that happens, it's time for you to go. It is time for you to go. But it's all about endurance. I will have to say that um, you know, I was a little older when I went into nursing school. And as you can hear, you know, I kept popping around, but that was because I was following my wonderful husband. But at the third time, I said, I'm not leaving it again. We're just going to have to stay here or I stay here. Anyway, we got that finished. 
<laughs> anyway, he ended up saying, I guess and he liked me too. And so, uh, but I would not change it for anything. I would not change my course. I wouldn't have gone, you know, I didn't go out of school. I didn't go to school right after high school. I got a little bit of life experiences and that helped for me. And if that's what's doing it for you, I mean, I, I can't see out here if there's people in their 40s or 50s or, or 30s or whatever. And, you know, I was like in my early 20s, but you'd think I was, you know, geriatric uh, when I was in school, but I wasn't. Um, but my point is, is that I wouldn't do it any other way. Stick to what you want to do. Stick to being the nurse that you want to be, that you want to see in your mind's eyes. Where do I want to be in five years? Where am I going to be in 10 years? Am I going to stay in nursing? Or, or am I trying to go up the ladder and stuff? Do I want to stay at bedside? Do I want to stay at clinic? Whatever you want to do. And that's the beauty about nursing. You don't have to just specialize in one thing. You know, you may like heart and then like, mm, you know, I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go to the cath lab now. Okay. And then I'm in the cath lab for two or three years. Okay. You know, I think maybe I'll go to open heart surgery. Okay, let's do that. Well, you know, I think I might know I want to do neurology. That's what I love about nursing. You can change jobs all over the place and stay in the same hospital if you want to. And what my desire is, is to see y'all all here because I'm going to, old lady, and I'm going to need some people to take care of me. <laughs> no, but seriously, seriously, it, it, is, it is all about the service and the care and taking care of people. Kindness, it makes a difference. Kindness makes a difference. But another thing that makes a difference is sense of humor. I am telling you, if you walk around in your unit all day, wah, 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 or mad or aggravated or something, that's, it, it's not gonna help. It's not gonna help. Sense of humor help. It's almost to the point where our sense of humor is called gallows humor. Yeah, because if we don't laugh at some of these things that happen, we're going to cry. And then we ain't any good there either. And it's okay to cry. But you can't cry over your patient. Sit there trying to do something with your patient and you're crying. They're thinking, oh my God, this person's crazy. He doesn't have it together at all. He doesn't have it together at all. That's not true. But sense of humor. And that's where it comes with, with your coworkers and your friends. But bottom line is, service. Am I going over too far? You know, I could be here for an hour and a half. Anyway, but my bottom line is, is to serve people. It takes dignity. It takes compassion, intelligence, strength, especially strength. And some of the top, the top five servant leaders that I think are just the, the best are Lincoln, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Mandela, and my personal favorite, Jesus of Nazareth. Be a servant, whether it's just for your two or three patients or you're doing it for a whole unit. Be a servant leader, because that, in my definition, is what a nurse is. I'm Janice King, I'm a nurse. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Janice. You can see why we love Janice King, right? <laughs> Uh, and I would tell you, her uh, compassion has not stopped. She's talking about that friend who she was caring for and advocating for recently. She's taken the step further. That friend has died, but now she's meeting with folks here at the university to try and set up a nursing student. What are we going to call this? Um, I haven't decided. Yeah, so a pipeline so that when someone is in need, this family needed someone to come and help. And what if we had a pipeline of students who could just step up and do that? 
And anyway, so she's, she's working on that now. So she really does have a passion for nursing and she continues to, even though she may not still be working uh, in the hospital as a nurse. So I now would like to welcome Dr. Jennifer Chilton, Chilton, our Associate Dean for Academic Affairs for the School of Nursing to the podium to discuss the tradition of the white coat. Dr. Chilton. Thank you, Dean Haas. Traditions and symbols are important. They anchor us to a place, a time, an event, and provide a link to a group, whether it's your family or profession. When one hears the word nurse, the image that comes to mind very likely looks like this. The capping ceremony was, pardon me? Oh, you've got one of those, okay. I thought, oh my gosh, I've already messed up. Okay, so the capping ceremony was an important part of every student nurse's entry into nursing school. We don't do that. And that's Dr. Deal, by the way. Y'all know Dr. Deal? So that's her capping ceremony. However, times change, roles change, and nursing and caps and capping ceremonies became a thing of the past. Pinning ceremonies are a time-honored tradition that do continue today. Each nursing school has a unique pin that graduating students are entitled to wear. That ceremony occurs just before graduation and entry into practice. Today, we celebrate the important milestone of embarking on one's first clinical experience. Today, you're taking part in a rite of passage that began in 1993 at Columbia University through the work of Arnold P. Gold Foundation. Dr. Gold, a professor at Columbia University for 58 years, loved his patients, his students, his residents, and his colleagues. And in the 1980s, when the technological advances allowed healthcare professionals to diagnose diseases in a new and faster ways and to employ new treatments, Dr. Gold worried that the connections between patients and those that cared for them was fraying. He believed human connection remained essential no matter how much machines could tell us. He also observed graduating students pledging an oath to compassionate patient care. Dr. Gold thought that it was too late. So he, with the help of his colleagues, wife, and the staff at the Arnold P. Gold Foundation initiated the white coat ceremony. The white coat ceremony emphasizes compassion and the human connection from the very beginning of clinical training. Today, medical schools, nursing schools, and many other health professions, health profession schools around the globe hold the white coat ceremony. You are now part of this tradition. Since UT Tyler School of Nursing is a past recipient of the American Association Association of Colleges of Nursing, Arnold P. Gold Foundation grant, the Gold Foundation is providing you with a pin to remind you of the human connection that is essential to patient care. Now it's time to celebrate each student individually as they receive their white coat. In any other semester, Dr. Karen Walker, BSN program director would be here, but unfortunately, Dr. Walker is preparing for a total knee replacement later on this week, and she's unable to participate in person. But we believe she's joined us virtually and would like to say a few words. Dr. Walker? Hello, can you hear me okay? We got gotcha. you. Awesome. I just wanna take a moment and congratulate each of you for reaching this important milestone in your journey to becoming a professional nurse. It feels like just yesterday we were sitting in BSN orientation. We are so proud and excited for each of you and please enjoy this special celebration of your success. Congratulations, looking forward to more successes from you all. Thank you, Dr. Walker. And now Dr. Deb Crumpler, Longview Site Coordinator and soon to be Dr. Dixie Rose, the Palestine Site Coordinator will assist me with cloaking the students. Please hold your applause until everyone has been cloaked. John Blankenship. Allison, oh, I'm sorry. Allison Brinecki. Alicia Serda Nino.
Colby Curry. Madeline Davis. Tara Desmond. Cheyenne Dooley. Raquel Gibson. Ashley Grafey. Stephanie Hernandez. Dressani Hernandez Arzeda. Summer Hines. Harley Holland. Tori Lewick. Gabriella Machado. Alexis Mars. Jennifer Merritt. Lance Milky. Brianna Page. Delina Petros. Caleb Purifoy. Natalia Ramirez. Gavin Ship. Jasmine Ship. Haley Schultz. Megan Snow.
Usmita Subedi. Connor Terry. Chimuyana. Uwakwe. Lindsay Ben Kekrix. Ambiel Vargis. Zoe Watson. Falaki Akinpelu Kojo Anibo Shira Baker Brittany Bain. Amber Carter. Marilyn Castillo. Dylan Cornish. Atiana Gosman. Tracy Hamana. Rachel Heathington. Lillian Ibokwe. Gracie Johnson. Uh, 
Anjali Kurian. Brooke Longoria. Sid Lolly Medellin. Caitlin Mitchell. Ashley Mosley. Ganu Ogidon. Michelle Sushal. Tara Putman. Samaj Richardson. Mackenzie Ryder. Amanda, Amanda Swasu. Gracie Ubani. Diana Uribe. Alejandra Villegas. Jennifer Waters. Savannah Westbrook. Kara Leela Abella. Cassandra Abella.
Atlanta Aceveda. Corday Ayi Juto. Risa Aguilar Morales. Chinene Akune. Samantha Alvarado. Maya Alvarez. Nia Amaro. Austin Aquino. Katie Avendano. Alvaro Ayala. Brittany Barnett. Caitlin Barron. Annika Barsness. Francisca Bassi. Madison Ba Caitlin Bodine Nicole Bocani Tyler Bowles Shelby Brookshire. (laughs) 
Riley Berhans. Isabel Burnett. Brittany Buttram. Carlos Camacho. Kylie Childress. Marina Clark. Marilyn Kobana. Rayanne Cumby. Corey Sear. Molly Dana. Jody Davis. Mariah Edwards. Alexander Elrod. <laughs> Natalie Espinoza. Alyssa Fort. Virginia Fuentes. Ariel Galvan. Natalie Gibbons. Caitlin Gibson. Alyssa Giordano. Emily Gonzalez.
Megan Hairgrove. Andy Haynes. Ann Hendricks. Sarah Henson. Asamchi E.K. Anita James. Jennifer Johnson. Justin Johnson. Madison Josie. Sydney Kai. Taylor Kaiser. Ashley King. Michaela Kaiser. Neely. Valerie McNamara. Sarah Mefford. Emily Mendez. Kaylee Mitchell. Stephanie Moctezuma. Ariana Mojica Luna. Kelly Montano. Ainsley Moran.
Darby Motley. Ida Mazwa. Yvonne Lukolu. Mary Murphy. Kathy Wynn. Ni Win Bailey Nichols Eber Inchi. Onya Franklin. Crystal Ortiz. JC Owens Hannah Oye Fade Aisha Oyawali Sharon Paul. Vasilki Perazus. Adriana Poe. Candace Hope. Courtney Hope. Natalie Prevateer. Manisha Pradhan. <laughs> Seely Redden. Aaron Roberts. Jill Rosenblum. Reagan Sandlin.
Kenan Shaw. Gracie Spearman. Piper Stewart. Kim Tang. Maddie Tarpley. Sandra Tierro. Amy Thomas. Jenna Thornhill. Bria Tobin. Bethany Tompkins. Jeffrey Tran. Crystal Turk. Anita Ugbabor. Alexa Underwood. Shane Varga. Megan Verghese. Taylor Valu. Gage Weirman. Abby Williams. McKenna Wood. Taylor York. Anastasia Young.
Cynthia Zuniga Balderas. Congratulations to each of you on achieving this milestone in your path to professional nursing. May you wear this coat with honor and pride and as a reminder of the essential role you play in professional healthcare. For the past 20 years, nurses have been recognized as the most trusted profession when compared to all other professions. This oath reflects the values that help nurses earn that trust. Integrity and honest, honesty are integral to all that you do as a student, whether it's taking a test, completing a care plan, or caring for that patient in the hospital or the community. Students, please stand and join me in recitation of the White Coat Ceremony Oath. As a nurse, dedicated to providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge that I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns, act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care, apply my knowledge and experience and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. Exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal. Knowledge and competence. Promote, advocate for, and strive to protect the health, safety, and rights of the patient. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the nursing profession. I take this pledge voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. You may be seated. <laughs> That was a heavy oath. I hope you take those words seriously. I think we, everyone deserves a round of applause here, right? Yeah. Dr. Gold led a long and vibrant life. If he were here today, he would say, listen, listen to your patients, see them as human beings, Pay attention to what they're telling you and don't be afraid to care. The connections you make with your colleagues, your patients, your patients' families are crucial for them and for you. Students, wear your uniform proudly and your coat proudly and treasure your time with patients as you begin your clinical experiences. Now I ask the students to remain in your seats for some group photos. And we thank our friends and family for joining us virtually this evening. And again, congratulations.